Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Three Steps to Career Elevation with Career Coach and UCLA alumna, Sammy Tusi. My name is Joseph Blancas and I serve as an Associate Director for Alumni Career Engagement at UCLA Alumni Affairs. In today's program, we will explore how you feel in your career growth today versus where you wanna be and how to close that gap to plan for a successful rest of the year. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank our Alumni Association Sustaining Donors. It's with your help that we are able to strengthen the Bruin community with career programs like this. For some general webinar housekeeping, we will have time at the end of our program for a Q&A with our speaker. So please use the Q&A function below to submit your questions. And we will also be recording the event and we'll send it out once it's made available. Now to start a program, I'm excited to introduce Sammy Tusi. Sammy is a board certified coach and owner of Tusi International, a consultancy that helps individuals tap into their purpose to benefit the world. Sammy's company encompasses more than 10 years of business and psychology experience, coaching new and existing founders and professionals on balance, growth strategy, and leadership. As the founder of Tusi International, she has coached leaders in organizations such as the EU Commission, Blue Cross, Mars, Netflix, Uber, and Disney. To date, Tusi has run over 70 workshops worldwide at companies including Rework and ZipRecruiter and has coached over 400 clients on topics focused on career building, leadership, time management, and work-life balance. Sammy, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I will turn it over to you. Okay, great. It's my program. Looks Wonderful. Good. Great. Can everyone, can you hear me? Yeah, it looks good. Amazing. Sounds good. <laughs> Okay, well, first of all, thank you for introducing me, Joseph. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I moved back to LA a few years ago after living abroad and feel such strong community with all the Bruins around LA. Um, I'd love today if you gave yourself the opportunity to gift yourself presence. So um, Place your phones on silent or do not disturb to be fully engaged with the webinar for the next 60 minutes. So this is going to be very interactive and hands-on. I'll be speaking about half the time and you'll be brainstorming, reflecting, and planning for the other half. And the reason I do this is because our daily routines have become so hectic that finding time to really pause and strategize can be quite challenging. So... I was actually told that my last year's webinar was one of the largest amount of signups UC UCLA alum has had. So for this year, I wanted to do a giveaway. You can go ahead and snap a picture of the webinar, then tag at Sammy 2 c plus Sammy 2 c UCLA alumni and enter a raffle for a chance to win a free career coaching session that's a $300 value and the book, my new book, The Success Coach. So before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and why I'm speaking with you today. So I, I grew up in a family where all the choices were made for me, and I felt that I was living a life for everyone else but myself. And that feeling crept into my 20s when I moved into the workforce after graduating from UCLA. I was working for an international trade and development startup in Dubai and working 80 to 100 hour weeks sleeping in the office to meet deadlines, and I was waking up at 4 a.m. to check my emails. I was stress eating, I wasn't healthy, and to the outside world, it looked like I had it all together, but I didn't. Eight years ago, before I started my coaching practice, I sought out a career coach, and we went through some of the steps that I'm going to take you through today to really get my priorities in order, because we spend more than 60% of our waking hours in our career and working. So your career is important, and by working with her, I found three things, which are the three steps to be the most important in getting to your goals. The first is reflecting on where you want to be in your life, planning on where you want to go, and then prioritizing the key factors that drive your career expansion. 
So that's what we're going to go through is looking at reflecting through the career wheel. We look at six different areas and rate your level of satisfaction on in each of those areas to make sure that you're feeling balanced. Then we plan through a thinking-based system, not just a time management system, but identifying your emotional follow-through, your why. And then we prioritize what's truly the most important to feel fulfilled in your career. So that takes us to our first step on reflection. If you don't have time to reflect on how things are going in your career, you won't know what needs to shift. So in the, there's, I've sent everyone, or I think Joseph sent a career elevation workbook. It's fillable. Um, if you don't have it, I believe Sarah is going to go ahead and put it in the chat now. Um, the first page is the career wheel. So you are looking at six different areas on this wheel from professional development to time management. And first, we're going to rate our current satisfaction level from zero to 10. So zero being the least satisfied and 10 being the most satisfied. Um, if you have the wheel printed, you'll connect the dots. And then we want to prioritize the two areas for improvement. So I'm going to take you through some just simple yet thought-provoking questions to help you gauge where your current satisfaction level is within each of these areas of, of your wheel. So let's first look at what I find to be the most important is attitude and mindset. So attitude is defined as your overall outlook. It's the demeanor and approach towards your tasks, your colleagues, and challenges which significantly influence your work environment. So questions you can ask yourself here is, on average, you know, on a given day, because attitude can shift, but when an unexpected event pops up into your calendar, let's say such as a meeting or another task on top of all your other to-dos, do you react or do you respond? Do you view failures as learning experiences or do you take them personally? On average, would you say you're more positive or negative in the workplace, optimistic or pessimistic? Are you proactive in seeking solutions or do you tend to dwell on problems? Go ahead and rate your level of satisfaction here between, again, zero being the least satisfied and 10 being the most. Now, relationships. Relationships are these professional interactions, connections, and dynamics among the people in the organization. So this could be your team, your manager, subordinates, clients. Um, ask yourself here, are you approachable and open to engaging with others? If you're a manager, do you understand what motivates your team? If you're an employee, do you have trust and transparency with your manager? Oops, sorry. Going back here. Um, so go ahead and rate relationships. Now, professional development. Professional development, as you can see here, is one of my lowest scores. This refers to the process of identifying goals and learning new skills to help you grow and succeed at work. I like to think of a few, like, top three questions here for me was, am I actively learning? Am I exploring new courses, workshops, possibly certification programs to keep growing within my business? And do you have, or do I have, right, career goals? Am I taking the steps to reach those goals through learning, through like hiring and outsourcing, especially if you are self-employed? So go ahead and rate your level of satisfaction here, again, between zero to 10 and just to gauge where you are. And remember, this is subject to shift, but it's right now how you're feeling. And then mentorship. So mentorship is all about picking up wisdom from the pros, the experience to level up your personal and professional game. So some questions to ask here are, are you seeking guidance? Do you actively look for mentors to learn from them? How do you handle advice? Are you willing to step outside of your comfort zone based on that guidance? And do you aim to mentor others? Are you open to guide and support others' growth as well? So go ahead and rate your level of satisfaction between zero to 10. And then we're going to move into communication. 
So communication is an art of exchanging information, ideas, and emotions with your colleagues, bosses, team members. Um, it's definitely, it's the language you use. It's also the messages you write, the emails, the unspoken cues you give, all working together to keep things flowing at work. So ask yourself, are you speaking up about ideas and sharing your ideas? Are you leaning into meetings or do you tend to keep your thoughts and ambitions to yourself? Maybe are you fearing judgment? Do you set communication boundaries? Do you communicate your availability and establish clear response times to maintain better work-life balance? Or do you frequently engage in work-related communication outside of working hours, especially when we're all work, many of us are working virtually, having a shutdown time, being very clear on what that looks like is important. So go ahead and rate where you are within communication in the workplace on a scale of zero to 10. And last but not least, is time management. So I find this one to be one of the most difficult and always comes up when I work with clients. Usually they come to me when they're feeling quite overwhelmed by all the things that they have to do. So ask yourself, is it difficult to meet deadlines? Do you feel like you own time or does time control you? Are you constantly trying to do too much or do you feel at ease with time? Right? Rate your level of satisfaction here, again, between zero to 10. Um, and now, you know, if you have your wheel printed, you can go ahead and fill in the areas and connect the dots. And I don't know if the chat is open, but I'd love to hear from you guys, you know, how many of you have a rating of a, a five or below? Now, if you see here, right, my wheel, professional development, okay, now I'm getting some chats in, great, not great, but the purpose of this is the next step, which is planning on how to grow within professional development too, okay, so our next step here is to, you know, as you can see, right, my wheel is imbalanced. And if I were to put this, if this was a tire on my car, I probably wouldn't get very far, right? I, I probably, if anything, get to the first stoplight and wouldn't be able to go much further. So the goal here is to, is to expand on the wheel. Note, this is my, my wheel goal. I never put anything at a 10 because I feel like there's no room for growth and development when you're at a 10, but it's to expand the wheel to feel more balanced and fulfilled and overall elevated, right, in my business. So the next step is to identify what are the top three areas for you that you want to grow within. Now, for time's sake, I'd like you to label these in priority of one to three, because we'll be tackling the most important area for you today. So mine is first professional development, followed by time management and communication. Know that if you have some low numbers after doing this, it's okay. That just means you're ready to tackle the next step in career elevation, which is our planning step. So what's the difference between Steve Jobs, Mother Teresa, Dalai Lama, Beyonce, is that they woke up every morning and they knew their exact mission and purpose on the planet. So we're going to use what's here called the RPM. It's the next sheet of the workbook in order to identify your why, in order to get a different way of thinking about how you plan for your days. So this is what I call the result purpose method, RPM. So the first R, R is for a result. So the first thing that you want to ask yourself is, 
based on the areas that you are focusing on in your career wheel, what is the result that you are after? What is it that you truly, really want from this? So you want to be really clear and specific on what it looks like. The more clear you are in specifically what you want to create, let's say within professional development for me, the faster your brain can get the, get you there. So you want to ask, wait, for example, what are the most important outcomes for you to get within your career? And to put this into practice before you open your to-do list in the morning, before you sit down and work, you think, what's my outcome for sitting down and working? Right? Because most people mistake action items and to-dos for achievement, but many people focus on being productive versus focusing on the outcome, which is where the result needs to come in. What is the result? First step. The second part is the P, the purpose. Purpose is more powerful than object. So you want to ask yourself, why do you want to take your career to the next level? What's going to keep you going is the purpose. The why is the most important piece of the RPM because this is where the emotional juice and the follow through is going to get you through the challenges that come up because we know they're going to come up. So every person you see who is successful knows their why. And 80% of success is your why. 20% is the how. Because if you have a big enough why, you're going to figure out how to do it. The why really needs to move you. So the last step is the method. So the method is what I, what I call the map, the massive action plan. So you want to think about what do you need to do? What are the priorities in order to get you to your result? So you want to make sure here, right, that your method is smart. It's specific for effective planning. It's measurable where you can evaluate the progress. It's attainable where you have enough time to accomplish it, relevant that's aligned with your long-term objectives and time-based. It's realistic, it has a realistic end date to motivate you to get it done. So our, our my RPM in here, right? My first focus, as I said, is professional development, which is currently at a six. My outcome, first, I sit down and I ask myself, what is my outcome? What am I after? To launch my business accelerator group program by August, by August, no, October 1st. Why, right? I want to make a bigger impact on the planet. I want to create community. I want to improve connection. So I'm using words that are my values here. Connection's a value. Impact is a value. Community. Those are words to me that are wonder words. They're, they motivate me in getting to my result. Right. The how. The how are the smart steps, which is the massive action plan in getting closer to where I want to go. Right. So it's speak to three people a week about the group coaching program. It's beta testing three different paid Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, it's sending newsletter promotions and connecting with potential partnership opportunities. It's also right here, I'm being really specific, five potential partnership opportunities. So it's amazing. So write this down. I wanted everyone to take about five minutes. I'll turn on some music to go ahead and write out your RPM. And if you've done this in your head, great. But if you can put it down on paper, it's even more powerful because your brain can see it. You take it out of your head and you place it on paper. So I'm going to turn on some music and put the clock for about five minutes from now. Go ahead and fill it in, right? Fill in your, your number one. This is just an example as of some more of mine, but I've listed the next two as homework just because we don't have enough time to probably get to it today. Um, this is probably is part of a longer workshop. So let me go ahead and turn on some music for us. Let's go ahead and move on. 
Um, I'd love to hear at the end what some people have written down for the outcome that they're looking for, their why and method. Um, I So in order to keep really focused on some of the goals here and focused on, on your RPM, I like to consider what I call the five power principles of success. The first one is forgetting the things that don't matter. So learning how to say no. As a recovering people pleaser, saying no has always been a tough one for me. But I've also found the that saying yes to too many things is one of the major killers in getting closer to your goals. If saying no is difficult, first of all, know that you're not alone, but it takes practice. It's like picking up weights after some time of not being, of just not going to the gym. Um, initially, it's hard, but the more often you do it, the more defined the no muscle becomes. And I also like to just check in with myself. Is this aligned with my goals, my priorities? And if I'm not excited to go, I have a motto. It's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. And then second, do one thing at a time. So studies show that multitasking leads to a decline in critical thinking, short-term memory loss, and researchers show that switching between tasks actually can cost 40% of someone's productive time. So I'm myself very guilty of having too many tabs open at once, but I've definitely also seen that impact. I'm running out of the door, looking for my sunglasses everywhere, just to remember that they've been on my head the whole time. So I'm definitely a case study of short-term memory loss, but I use, I try to use apps like Forest um, to sort of just be away from my phone or the Pomodoro technique to just focus on one thing at a time. Um, and I will put in specifically what my intention is for that 20 to keep it going. Um, now clarify. So the third focus is C, take a step back, observe your actions. Are you just being busy, right? Are you like most, most people want to be productive. They want to complete their to-do list versus really taking the actions to get to your outcome. I like to run through this wheel exercise at least once a quarter with clients and even with myself to really understand where the intention and the focus needs to be set in place. And then unsubscribe, right? According to a survey from 2022, the average American checks their phone 144 times a day. I went ahead and did a little bit of math, and that's about 69 days out of the year where because people are spending an average of four and a half hours on their phones, um, which is actually up 30% from last year. So I recommend challenging yourself using, there's a lot of resources out there, which is my next slide, but using like apps like Forest or even going on airplane mode to see how long you can be without your phone. Um, maybe like challenging yourself to put your phone on do not disturb until 3 p.m. and we're putting it in the other room. And then the S is for serving right? Come back to your why. Know your bigger purpose. Know your mission. Remember why you're doing it and what's the emotional juice behind placing energy in that RPM, right? In the area that you want to grow and develop. So here are just some apps and books that I personally really love. Um, books on habit creation. There's a gamified app here called Habitica that really that where you get to put down um, just like habits that you want to create and let go of. And Forest is also a really great one. I'll go ahead and I can share this slide after as well. Um, our next step, <laughs> one more step to career elevation is one of my favorite steps, the non-negotiable list. So in that third page of the workbook, you will find a non-negotiable list, which is a contract that you are making to yourself 
to identify what three to five things in your career are an absolute must for you, not a should, but a must. So what are some commitments that you can make to feeling more fulfilled at work? So for me, I know I've done a lot of energy management work and I know that my most creative time in the morning is is first thing in the morning. So making sure to wake up at 6 a.m., um, do my morning routine and spend one hour on my MIT, which is my most important task. So this specific one for me falls within time management. Remember, try to go back to page one, go back to your wheel and I and look at those areas that you prioritized and create three to five things, even three things is enough that you want to commit to doing to feeling more fulfilled in your career. So another one for me is on the business Friday, right? That one falls also within time management, spending nine to 12 really focused on my business versus in it. Um, this also falls within professional development and communication, being very clear about my boundaries with clients, like knowing that some of these goals or some of these new habits and shoulds in your and musts in your life will fall within various areas of that wheel. Um, carving out 15 minutes to create a to-do list for the next day is one of my non-negotiables. Automating, sending feedback forms, so I'm working more on my business than in it, and then having business coaching sessions with my own coach at least three times a month. So take about I'm going to put the clock on for about another five minutes. So at 12.42, um, we will go ahead and move on to the rest of our webinar today. But I'm going to turn on some music right now. Take some time to fill this in, right? Think about what are some absolute musts for you? Because this is a contract that you are making with yourself. The most important person in your life is you. What are some things that you want to do to feel more fulfilled in your career? So again, until 1242, go ahead and start to fill some of these out and I will keep the music going. Sign it. Take a picture. Help. Put it on your background screensaver. This is, again, the contract that you are making with yourself with new habits or maintaining habits in order to feel more, more fulfilled more just excited and purposeful in your career, in your life. Okay, so just some helpful tips um, because I know that life gets in the way of committing to some of some new habits um, that you want to make sure that you're implementing. But the first is one of the most important, set a recurring time slot in your calendar. So, with, for example, my business coach or the 15 minutes that I close out the day and write out my to-do list, it is slotted in to my calendar so that I know when it's happening and there's no excuse behind it, right? Um, also, connect with a colleague or a friend or connect with a coach to make sure to keep you motivated, accountable, and Last, like one of the most important things is celebrate your wins, right? Reward yourself after you've completed the task. It doesn't have to be perfect because I truly believe in progress over perfection. Make sure that you treat yourself to an ice cream or a long walk or a trip, whatever that is, after you are seeing progress based on the commitments that you've made, right? And then Stop, pause, and reflect throughout the day. Don't let the day go by knowing what you want to make sure to hone in on and honor in your day, in your week, in your month. Make sure that you're on track, okay? So we have talked about reflecting, going through the career wheel, and identifying what's most important to then plan through our thinking-based system, the result purpose method, 
And then we went through our last step, which is prioritizing, looking at the non-negotiable list and prioritizing what's most important to feel more elevated in your career. So now you might be thinking, okay, it's been 45 minutes. This is great. Really good. I should do some of those things on my non-negotiable list. Well, there's an old Chinese proverb that says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant that tree is right now. So I want to extend an offer to all of you today. It's a free consultation. We can dig into your must-haves, your goals, to keep your career momentum going, growing and going. Um, I love working with fellow Bruins. If this, if you found this helpful today, we will, during our consultation, look at what you've outlined to be some of those focus areas and dig a little bit deeper into the purpose of what's what you truly will help you elevate that career. Um, so thank you for coming. This is a QR code that you can go ahead and scan. I wanted to make sure to end a little bit early so there's enough time for Q&A. Um, so once we are ready, Joseph, we can go ahead and open it up for some questions. Yeah, um, thank you, Sammy, for such a structured three-step guide. Um, for everyone who's tuning in, if you have a question for Sammy, please feel free to throw it in the Q&A function below. Um, I'm also going to be throwing into the chat um, a link to our post-program feedback survey. Um, so for those of you who might be sticking around and just want to hear her go through some of the questions, um, please take some time to complete this short survey um, so that we can um, think about uh, future programming for, for uh, this network of coaches. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions for Sammy, uh, feel free to throw them into the chat. Um, and then uh, I'll start us off with a question that we got in registration, Sammy. Um, and it was, uh, how do you recommend maintaining a growth mindset with a consistent long-term career? Hmm. So what I'm hearing is, re rec how do you recommend attaining a growth, a growth mindset in a long-term career? Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I would say is making sure that you have milestones within that career. So whether it's you creating them with yourself or you connecting with your manager and setting up some deliverables that you want to see in your growth trajectory too. So say, for example, you are an entry-level UX designer who wants to then move into being a senior level and then a CTO. So knowing what steps are you need to take or certification programs um, or maybe like other mentorship opportunities in order to grow your, your skills. Great, thank you. Um, and we got one in the Q and A uh, box. And the question is, you mentioned you were a people pleaser. How do you start breaking these tendencies in the workplace? Hmm. Gosh, what a good question. Um, so with that, yes, Deb, recovering people pleaser here, breaking through the tendencies. I I actually wrote out for myself some standard operating procedures within my own business. And that's where the communication, where, you know, even in my RPM, I wrote out one of my factors is communication. So being very clear, for example with my clients on time and knowing that at the, you know, my sessions are 50 minutes at the 50 minute mark, that the session is complete. Um, but I, I think one of the main things for me has been communication, which I find to be assertive communication, being very clear about your expectations um, and making sure that you're aligned with the people that you're working with. 
Great, thank you. Hopefully, whoever answer, asked that question, you got uh, your answer. And we had another question um, in the registration. Um, and the individual asked, what are best practices for um, a career transition when you're not sure what you want to do? Hmm. Oh, I love this question. Um, so it's, I have a lot of clients who come to me not sure what they really want to do. First, I would say take an inventory of your strengths, of where you derive passion and energy and where you feel like time just passes by. Um, that could just be brain dumping, like all the things that you enjoy doing. And it doesn't just have to be with work. It could also be in your personal life. And then based on that, you know, I, I also recommend like taking an Enneagram assessment and better understanding some of your strengths and, and areas for growth, um, looking at the Meyer Briggs test or a career aptitude test and just seeing like what resonates with you. There's a lot of different options out there, but I think that's something to explore so you feel more confident in shadowing someone who could be in that next career that you're thinking about. Great, thank you. Uh, we got a question in the chat because uh, I believe you mentioned you uh, wrote a book. Um, how many books have you wrote and uh, what are they about? Yeah, great question. Um, so I, I've written two books. One is uh, called The Magic Bracelet. It's a children's book. Um, it's about a little girl who uses the placebo effect, uses a, a bracelet. I can show you guys my bracelet. It says brave. Um, and whenever she is feeling nervous or needs to step out of, outside of her comfort zone on a hike that she's on, she taps on her bracelet, which gives her courage um, to step into the unknown. So that's one book. The second book is The Success Coach. It's on how to start a coaching business from scratch. It's the Bible to starting a coaching or consulting service-based business. That's great. We actually just, we had a question that asked suggestions to build a life coaching brand from scratch. <laughs> so um, for whoever asked that question, hopefully you can um, uh, buy Sammy's book and, and have that as a helpful resource. And obviously, if you have more questions about that, feel free to reach out to Sammy, and I'm sure she'd be happy to uh, provide you with some insight. Um, another question that we received is, do you have any advice for recent graduates trying to get their first full-time job? The process of applying and hearing nothing back feels so endless, and I've been finding it difficult to stay motivated. It's a great question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. First of all, know that you're not alone. Um, applying is a full-time job. And um, I, I do wish that more employers understood the like the candidate side of, of all of this too. Um, one thing I would say is try to talk and network with as many people as possible. You're not going to find a job just by easy applying on LinkedIn. It's very rare. So connect with your UC UCLA alumni network. Um, start to you know reach out to friends and family. And while they might not be in the exact like they might not be in the industry that you're looking for. They have 10 people in their network that may. And so um, speaking to as many people as possible, networking, connecting, letting people know that you're a recent graduate and that you are looking to find something that's meaningful for you. You want to find a career. And, and I think a lot of people are quite open and receptive to talking and, and getting to to speak to you and, and tell you about, you know, what, what it's been like for them and their jobs. Yeah. So. And I think to add to that is talking to these people, you realize that you're not alone. Um, yeah. Yeah. and, and I think that in itself could motivate you, um, that it's not you, it's just sometimes, you know, the market. And mm -hmm. I have been hearing lately that the market has been, been tough and it's, um, but like you said, Tammy, it is a full-time job trying to apply for a job. So, yeah. um, but to the person who asked that, hopefully you got your answer. 
Um, and if you'd like to reach out uh, for additional support or resources from your alumni association, please feel free to do so. And we'd be happy to um, provide those to you. Um, another question that we received is, how do you navigate setting goals to grow in your career when there is no clear or set up trajectory in your current role? Mm, okay. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is right. How do we navigate setting goals to grow in our in our career when there is no set up trajectory? Um, it's you know that it's actually happens a lot more than it should. Um, I think knowing I like to talk to my future self sometimes and and knowing like where I want to be in ten years. I think that's really important to ask yourself is, what does that look like for you? What is it that you want to be doing on a day to day? Where do you want to live? What do you want your work hours to be like? And talking, I, I do really recommend talking to people. Like if you see if you're an engineer and you want to be a CTO, talk to the CTO, try to get more mentorship, mm-hmm. um, figure out how to also look at those 10 year goals and then set up some bite sized goals let's say for the next quarter or even the next one year in order to get closer and and again milestones because if there's no one who is really managing or or supporting your growth figuring out how to do that for yourself here too great okay. thank you um, another question that we have is, um, what advice do you have for navigating burnout and career exploration? Okay. So first, navigating burnout. Um, so having a, I really believe in having a shutdown time. That is very important. So knowing, especially if you are someone who works from home, it's really hard to know when to stop working. Um, But knowing what time you are going to start before you start working. So the night before you identify, this is what time I'm starting and this is what time I'm ending. Anything that doesn't get done, you roll over to the next day and making that more of a habit because there's always going to be something to do. Um, I know I run my own business. So rolling over as much as you can and, and also writing out your wins so that you give yourself that permission to, to, to roll those things over and then career exploration. um, I think we talked about this, like writing out, you're just brain dumping what you're passionate about, starting to talk to people in your circle about various positions or, you know, careers that you're, you've been interested in. Um, so, yeah, I think, yes, I hope that helps, but if not, feel free to reach out to me and we can talk more. Um, great. Uh, last question that we're going to be able to take today Uh, before our closing remarks is um, uh, how to navigate finding the next steps when you feel like you've already accomplished your professional goals. Okay. So I'm hearing how to, can you say that one more time, Joseph? Um, The question is how to navigate finding the next steps when you feel like you've already accomplished your professional goals. Mm, Okay. Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Well, love that. Love that we've accomplished our professional goals. Next steps. Um, you know, I think it sounds like there's we want a challenge and and an area for growth. Um, I think it's starting to ask yourself what are you just naturally interested in and what mm-hmm. can you do in order to to dive into that space, whether that's, you know, Say, for example, you want to learn French and you you get on Duolingo or you find a tutor and being able to take some time to like explore what that's going to feel like and being able to just, yeah, support, support that next step within your, your goals too. 
of the house. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Kathy. Um, before I close this out, I wanted to give you a chance to share any final thoughts, um, pieces of wisdom uh, with our, our attendees today. Hmm. Um, well, really, I think that was pretty much it. I, I am feeling so grateful that I got to talk to my alumni. I'm like, have always in my, like, as a kid, I like really wanted to go to UCLA, originally from Houston. Um, so my whole family went there. So I, first of all, feel really honored to get to speak to everyone today. And um, I think just take some of these tools with you. You're not going to, and be patient with yourself. That's what I would say too. Be patient, have compassion. You're not going to change all of your habits overnight, but really get to celebrate your wins and take it like day by day. Um, we spend more than 60% of our waking hours working. So you should feel fulfilled and balanced in the work that you're doing. And if not, um, start to explore what that, mm -hmm. what it looks like to feel more fulfillment. And I hope that today helped. Yeah. Um, I, I think the 60% um, number, like, I've always, thought, I've always thought we worked, you know, half our, our kind of day or life. And I'm like, wow, it's actually 60%. And so I think, um, if you aren't feeling fulfilled, right, then you're going to need to um, step outside of your comfort zone and and try something different. So thank you for the, the tools that you shared today. And for those of us, for those of you tuning in, join me in thanking Sammy for being with us um, today. This is a Believe Her third webinar with us in the last three years. So uh, Sammy, thank you for always being willing to give back to the Bruin community. Um, and I'd like to just close with um, encouraging you all to explore our Bruin Promise website, which offers additional uh, opportunities for you to stay engaged with UCLA. It offers a range of multidisciplinary opportunities, uh, tools and resources for you to advance in your career, um, continue lifelong learning and different pathways throughout your lifetime. Um, I believe the, the link to the website has been thrown into the chat. And then lastly, we have another Career Coaches Insights series coming up in September around the corner. Um, can't believe it, but it is on how to effectively negotiate your salary, total rewards package, or career advancement. So um, you're going to do this work, right, on elevating your career. Um, how do you bring that to a um, supervisor, hiring manager? Um, so I think do the work now so that time when this uh, webinar comes on September 21st at noon, um, you could be fully prepared and ready to have those conversations. So um, the link has been thrown into the chat for that as well. Um, and then just lastly, thank you all for joining us. And um, as always, uh, go Bruins. Go Bruins.